Herman Melville really does. Is that his name? Did I do that right? Herman Melville? Um, no, it's, uh, um, what the hell is his name? I'm blanking too. <laughs> <laughs> See, you wouldn't be blinking unless I, uh, Ernest Menville. Ernest Menville. <laughs> Who's Herman That's Melville? A, he's a writer, isn't he? <laughs> Death Becomes Her is a 1992 American satirical black comedy fantasy film directed by Robert Zemeckis, starring Meryl Streep, Bruce Willis, Goldie Hawn, and Isabella Rossellini. Welcome back to the Cult of Films. I'm John, the host, and I'm joined by the one and only Lindsay Washburn. How is your eternity going, my friend? It's going well so far. Nothing's peeling off yet. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Looks like you just came out of the the chop shop, right? Everything, right? Uh, Everything's good. Nice. Yeah. Got a fresh coat of paint. Uh, are you drinking more potion right now? Yes. You gotta you gotta keep filling that tank. So, I think that's going to do the opposite of what you think it's gonna do. <laughs> Probably. 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 Another one. You and I have all these conversations all the time, and then we're like, "Hey, what about this movie?" And like sometimes. You and I are the only ones that are just like, oh my God, like I know. geek out about everyone it. Else, everyone else was like, eh, I'll skip this one. And it's like, you guys suck. You yeah. Suck. This is like- You're no fun. This is the best. <laughs> this is the fucking best movie. Ernest! You pushed me down the stairs. We're, I, I think we're, we're around the same age, I think. You know, we're like 400 years old at this point. Right. But yeah, this was one of the ones that came out when I, I was a child. It came out in 1992. Mm-hmm. And this one tricked my mother because she was the biggest uh, Goldie Hawn fan on the face of the planet. Not so much Meryl Streep. Like, I, I was more of a Meryl Streep fan, you know, at, at 10 years old. But Goldie Hawn, you know, overboard. Private like, Benjamin. In, Private Benjamin, thank you. Wildcats. Uh, yes. All of the things, mostly with Kurt Russell, was constantly playing <laughs> on repeat in my household. So, of course, my mom's just like, Goldie Hawn in a movie, let's go. So she took the kids, and we saw it, and everyone was upset except me. <laughs> and I th- I'm like, that is the coolest thing. And, of course, you know, uh, trying to get a, a kid excited for this movie to go see it. Like I had to get dragged to the theater. I got like extra popcorn just to shut up. And then I was the one that was cheering it on more. Uh, did you get to see this one in the theater? <laughs> I, no, I did not. We only got to make it out to the theater usually for like the huge, like big summer releases, the big, you know, tent pole films. And this was not one of them. Yeah. I think this was released the same weekend as Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Bebe's Kids. Bebe's Kids. <laughs> we don't die, we multiply. <laughs> it did it did beat both of them at the box office. I don't remember what time of the year this was released, but it wasn't a big huge studio release. But no, I saw it on home video probably the first few months it was out and and I just loved it. It was so funny and campy and zany and all the special effects that were state of the art and groundbreaking at the time. I will not speak to you till you put your head on straight. Mm -hmm. This movie just blew my mind. It was so much fun. It was so funny. It's got so many quotable lines in it and just Meryl Streep and Goldie Hawn together, just gold. It, it was trying to cash in on the horror comedy craze of the 80s and the 90s. Mm-hmm. Because to think that this is a cult film with who was behind it. You have right? Robert Zemeckis coming off of Back to the Future 3, going into Forrest Gump. Gump. Like, yeah. <laughs> this was the hump day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, but you also had Industrial Light and Magic, like you mentioned, yes. uh, doing all the effects on this. You had Alan Silvestri as the, doing the score. This film was shot by Dean Cundy. Like this, got, film, this had, film has just so much talent involved. Just and they so, accidentally so made much. like one of the best cult films of all time. <laughs> right? <laughs> just so much stuff. Yeah, you had for production design, you had Rick Carter who did Jurassic Park, Avatar, mm-hmm. Forrest Gump, 
the Back to the Future movies. You can tell Robert Zemeckis has his certain people that he really likes to work with. You've got mm -hmm. Dick Smith, who did the effects. He did Scanners, Exorcist, Starman, Taxi Driver, Stepford Wives. He did the, the makeup effects, excuse mm -hmm. me. The visual effects, like you said, was ILM and, and won the Oscar for it. Beating so. out Batman Returns. Yes. <laughs> Yes, just crazy. It's this just movie crazy. literally fell down the stairs so Jurassic Park could run, right? Because oh, yes. it, all of they figured out how to do visual effects with skin mm -hmm. in this film because the technology didn't exist. No. Bob Semeckis is just like, no, we have to get this done and it can't all just be practical effects uh -oh. because there was, you know, there's a certain limit to Meryl Streep picking her head up and twisting it around. Yes. <laughs> they figured this shit out on the spot and that's how we got dinosaurs like right? a couple years later. That's insane. Yeah, it's crazy because um, that a movie like this... <laughs> With two dead women beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> two dead middle-aged women, right? Like, and Bruce Willis. Oh my! Oh, we'll we'll get to the cast. Yes. I, I want to slow roll the cast because that is like, it's, oh my Crazy. god, what is Mean Girls forever about, Lindsay? Well, we start off and uh, it's it's told in a few chunks of time before we get to the main story. We get the backstory of these two frenemies, Goldie Hawn and Meryl Streep. Sorry, I brain farted for a second there. Mad! <laughs> Hell! <laughs> yes, and they're very much frenemies. They grew up together, went to high school, went to college, and they've always had this unspoken rivalry. And they're conniving and backstabbing, and and Meryl Streep keeps stealing um, Goldie Hawn's boyfriends, and it's never about the guy. It's always to, to stick it to her, you know? There's right. just this comp petition between these two where they will go to any lengths to best the other one it was a dinner a business dinner the woman wanted my professional opinion Ernest, you don't know madeline the way i do she wants you she wants you because you're mine i've lost men to her before and so bruce willis was originally his character was originally engaged to be married to Goldie Hunt's character, but they go see this Broadway show that's just <laughs> terrible. I love that's that scene. Awful. <laughs> that Meryl Streep is starring in. She's kind of like a, a, a fading actress, a fading right. starlet from the 60s. And she ends up stealing Bruce Willis away from Goldie Hunt. Like she has so many done so many times before. And she's got two reasons for that. One yeah. is because she likes to steal whatever Goldie Hawn has, but also he's this world-renowned plastic surgeon. Right. <laughs> so she's like, he can keep me young. They, There's they plant, an added bonus. Yes, they can, They plant that seed of how they want to stay young at the at that first little vignette that we get. And right. the rest of the film is, is the lengths that these two women go to, to one, stay young, and two, just destroy each other. Yep. <laughs> and it's it's perfect. Uh, it and it perfect. start the the movie starts out uh, like you said with that musical number. But before that, you get like audio like real time audience member reactions walking out, and they say something. One of them uh, says something like, "Oh, where did they dig her up from?" or something. Right. Kind of foreshadowing <laughs> like what this is. Son of youth, who are they kidding? Thank God you wanted to leave. Taxi. Taxi. Madeline Ashton, talk about waking the dead. And it's all just this complete wank piece. This like vanity. Uh, you know, Meryl Streep just like, oh, look at me. Oh, I'm wonderful, you know, and just like dancing around. She's playing for an audience of one, really. Mm -hmm. And it and it works, you know, because uh, Helen, who is Goldie Hawn's character, she is doing the Madison Ashton uh, test. Or yes. Madel Ma Madeline, Madeline Ashton. Madeline yeah. Ashton test, where she has to bring whatever guy around, even though it always ends up this way. And, and mm -hmm. that, I have a feeling, is on purpose, because that, she, like, I feel like, it's the most parasitic relationship and neither neither of them could survive without the other like they need each other to fulfill these roles because yes helen's the more bookish one mm -hmm. and it's it, and it actually like uh bob Semeckis kind of does a, a a fun trick it's like this mystery because you really feel bad for the helen character for a while yes <laughs> and then then you re until you really don't and you you learn that she is just as bad as as a uh, uh, Meryl Streep. Yeah, because I mean, if if someone keeps doing this to you, one, why do you keep having this relationship with them? 
And two, why would you bring anyone around them? Because you know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, which which goes into my, and you've alluded to it uh, a little bit in the beginning, where this is one of the most quotable films. Because yes. I have a list of just <laughs> things that not only uh, do, do people use, like you, like say all the time quoting this movie probably unknowingly but i still say to this day like where she's in her dressing room after the show and her mm -hmm. her friends like uh you know getting her ready or or, or just like you know tending to her mm -hmm. she's like is she here yet and she's like who hell and you idiot like i still i call people <laughs> idiot like that right. all the time hell and you idiot yeah idiot you idiot yeah <laughs> But it's yeah, it, it's a quote a minute, and it's mm -hmm. also like a like a Joe Dante Zucker Brothers uh, gag reel too. Oh yeah, there's so many gags in this. It's like watching Gremlins too. Oh yeah, there's so many little hidden jokes in this movie that if you're not paying attention, you're you're not gonna see them. Just little like things. There's one scene where Helen Goldie Hawn's character is explaining this plot to, to Bruce Willis about how they're gonna kill Madeline Ashton. And it's like a fantasy scene. And it shows a little bit of the coroner's office and it closes the, the case saying case, case closed. <laughs> and on the desk, there's a brain in a jar and it says abnormal, like Abby normal. <laughs> so it's a reference to either Frankenstein or, or young Frankenstein. Right. But again, it's it's a dead character coming being brought back to life. So it's, it's just a nice little joke right there. Oh, you get you get the henchman in uh, Liesel's uh, as Tom, Dick, and oh Harry. Oh my god! <laughs> Look exactly yes. the same. And just there's so many like little weird surrealist moments yeah. in this movie. Uh, like when she's at the spa, and the one door closes and you see the mirror, and it's this guy on this like rotating contraption <laughs> hooked up to all these machines, and he's just Owning, like, yeah. <laughs> you're like, what are they doing in this office? Right. And yeah, then just, just crazy shit like that. Or when he's going to the morgue to get her after they think she's dead, and there's the nuns floating down the hallway. Oh my just God. <laughs> weird I shit know. like that. That actually kind of freaked me out as a kid because I was just like, why are they floating? Right? It, it, it felt like a, like that was like a scene from like Scrooge or something yes. where it had that like those weird, mm -hmm. uh, like you said, surreal moments that just don't fit with the, that are like right? not part of this movie. Mm -hmm. But everything in this is kind of dreamlike mm -hmm. and it, it just works. It, like, it's not, I'm, I won't say it's like a heady comedy or anything, but it just has a little bit more substance. It's very campy. It's yeah. very campy. It's very high camp. Um, it go. If I was to to recommend people like other films to watch along with this movie, mm -hmm. I'd recommend Heather's, uh, mm -hmm. Witches of Eastwick, exactly. She Devil. Yeah. Which also stars Mel St Meryl Streep. Just kind of those heightened reality mm -hmm. type of films. Not not a. Not necessarily fantasy or or anything like that, but just heightened reality. The cutting around, like it's paced really well, but the way it's cut together, it does have that kind of like herky jerky, um, dreamlike quality where they're mm -hmm. just like in this one spot, and then the next minute they're in a hospital room. You know, right. it's just like the way it's edited <laughs> is edited like uh, like a crazy person. Oh yeah, one of my favorite edits is at the beginning when um, they went to see the show, and then it cuts to their apartment where where Helen is sitting on the couch and she's just twisting that tissue like she yeah. always does. And Bruce Willis is like, come on, it was just a dinner. It was a business dinner. She wanted my professional opinion. Yeah. I have not, nor will I ever have any interest in Madeline Ashton. Smash cut Hard to cat. their wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was almost Great. like a Sam Raimi cut. Right? You should have like done a Zoom. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Oh, the twisting of the thing and then it zooms into her like bleeding out of yep. her hand. Small shit. I could watch the the scene from like Day of the Dead where what's his face gets like torn apart and just laugh. It's mm -hmm. those little things where like people aren't supposed to bleed that really like fucking get to me. Like oh, yeah. they get under my skin. That's always been one of them. Well, and then after that, we get the next seven, the seven years later, the mm -hmm. first seven years later, where we see what has happened to Helen 
after, you know, Madeline once again stole her man and she's <laughs> become very overweight and she's living in a, a dingy apartment filled with cats and just she's trying out for the nutty professor yes and tons and tons <laughs> of empty cans of frosting <laughs> the whole cupboard her whole cupboard frosting. is just like two different kinds of frosting and she's re-watching this old movie of madeline ashton's of her getting strangled to death yes it's her favorite also foreshadowing also foreshadowing she just <laughs> keeps rewinding and rewinding and she's obsessed 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 and this was before Nutty Professor too. So it wasn't just like ground, and, and you know, I, I'm saying groundbreaking lightly, but the fat suit is kind of, it's pretty cutting edge, right? Like- Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's well, the makeup is really well done, especially around her face and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. It's pretty so, seamless. It's just like, they, they did all these things first. And I don't think that this film gets a lot of credit for mm -hmm. that being like, such a, such a groundbreaking visual effects and practical effects. And that mm -hmm. was one thing that Meryl Streep hated. This made Meryl Streep <laughs> never want to do anything with special effects again, because she's like, this was a pain in the ass. Uh, mm -hmm. All the prosthetics sucked. The the, green, the blue screen was terrible. She's like, my mom came uh, to shoot one day. And she's just like, why do you have a ski mask on against a blue screen? <laughs> like, just fucking go with it. Uh, so she, she never really did a role like this again. Um, no. Goldie Hawn, on the other end, loved it. She even took a shovel to the face during the the, du <laughs> the shovel dueling scene. She has like a scar from it. And she was like so into it, though. She was very, very into it. You could tell they were both having a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, because originally Meryl Streep thought that she was going to be playing the Helen role because that's mm -hmm. stereotypically more the kind in the vein of the character she has played. No, she, she thought she was going to be Isabella Rossellini. Oh, really? I thought it was yeah. the Helen role. No, she wanted a small part. <laughs> <laughs> but I I love when, uh, because she's such a, she's a good comedian. Yeah. She's very, I mean, she's a very versatile actress and she's very good. She's one of the greatest actresses ever. Yes. But I love watching her do something comedic where she's not 100% perfect. She can, you know... <laughs> get a little dirty you know get her hands yeah. a little dirty and get in there and have some fun because she does that in she devil also mm -hmm. which is another movie i like <laughs> and goldie hahn it was kind of in her pocket because she's a, kind of a, i keep saying underrated and somewhere i hear jason alt screaming that i'm a hack uh, film reviewer right you now. say that about every fucking director <laughs> on every episode Swear to God. Where's his Listen, where's you his don't hole? know this. We did another episode five minutes ago, and he said the same fucking thing about Walter Hill. Shut up. I, Goldie Hawn is an underappreciated uh, physical comedic actor. Yes, she's uh, very good. She does so good in those in those roles because she had the big prosthetics with with the mm -hmm. fat suit. She had to do you know she had the hole in her stomach. She had a hole in her stomach. <laughs> She's wet. They had all the the makeup at the end. There, yeah. It was a very physically comedic role for her. Yeah, those and, uh, contacts, those like thriller well. like contacts. Yes. Too, was like a, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> but going back to what you were saying, yes, there's. So, there's so many little physical things that Goldie Hawn yeah. does to really punch up the performance and punch up the character. Like uh, the thing they do where they kiss each other on the cheek, stuff like that. <laughs> because, <laughs> because they don't just do it, especially when Goldie Hawn does it. She like moves her mouth in a specific way. She does a lot yeah. of mouth and lip acting in this <laughs> movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, we have to talk about Bruce Willis. And if anyone watches the cult of films is watching now, you're probably familiar with my distaste for Bruce Willis. It's not like <laughs> as bad as uh, my hatred for like James Woods, but it's close. <laughs> I, did, I just think Bruce Willis, like besides a few roles, is just always phoning it in. I, I'm just not a not a fan. This, although he's doing a Rick Moranis bit. He is uh, very Rick Moranis in this. Seeing the most monstrous things and she's dead and I did it. I didn't think I'd be able to, but I just had this feeling inside of me that I couldn't contain. And we're free, Helen, but I'm afraid I'm gonna burn in hell because her neck is broken and there's no pulse and she's dead. He is so good in this. I, I have to give him all the credit. Besides Die Hard, this is my favorite performance of his. Cause I mean, his roots are in comedy. Right. So this is right up his alley. And it's nice to see him do another comedic role after Die Hard happened, because after that, he was pretty much 
you know, the action guy or the more mm-hmm. serious sci-fi guy. So to see him take on a comedic role like this, he's, he just, he nails it. He completely yeah. nails it. And this was supposed to be uh, Kevin Klein. He was offered the role, but he declined it to go star in the movie Dave, which mm-hmm. maybe he has regrets. I would. But uh, yeah, Bruce Willis, this was a, a complete non-vanity role for him. I, I think you could argue that, that you know, Meryl Streep and Goldie Hawn got to kind of glow up in this. Oh, and they yeah. got to show off a little bit Mm -hmm. uh you know they got to just be very glamorous where bruce willis is like the schlubbiest he's ever been he looks like he does now but back in 1992 (laughs) like they just did such a good job with him and and he didn't take a line off like this was not a stereotypical bruce willis role Uh, no not at all and and he didn't have a gun like well i guess he had a couple he was a republican in this (laughs) as she stated a fat bald (laughs) Soft, oh, Republican. Oh, soft, bald, overweight <laughs> Republican. Yes. <laughs> but no, he's he's really good. And his character is such just, just beaten down doormat kind of guy where he's, he's just, and by the end of the movie, he's just had it. He's had it with these two women that have, that have ruined his life and he can't take it anymore. He, he will not do what they want him to do. If he tells them to do something, he's like, fuck you, I'll die. I don't care. No. You don't look for me. You don't ask about me. You don't even think about me ever again. Uh, and it just works so well, because he's just like, uh, just like, where'd you take my wife? She's like, oh, she's dead, sir. She took her to the morgue. The morgue? She'll be She'll furious. Be furious. <laughs> yeah. Isabella Rosalini's trying to get him to drink the potion towards the end. She's just like, you know, live forever. He's just like, what am I going to do? What if I get bored? <laughs> it says everything the exact same, but that in itself is kind of a joke. It's a miracle! I mean, those are his more hyperactive moments in the film, yeah. but even when he's dialed down, he's just, you know, he's just drunk. He's this alcoholic. He used to be this world-renowned surgeon. Now he's painting dead bodies with spray paint. <laughs> is that ever ex- explained really why he had... He- made the switch to become a more he was he was so miserable being married to Meryl Streep that he became an alcoholic and so he couldn't he oh. couldn't do surgery anymore he essentially he got yeah. the shakes he's getting old when they go to the book party mm-hmm. Helen's book party before they see her and she's all like holy shit and he's sitting there and with his drink he's just kind of you know trying to be by himself, not interacting with anyone. And then Mary Ellen Trainer comes up and starts <laughs> talking to him and is like, oh yes, you took such good care of my aunt, whatever. And he's explaining, he's like, yeah, spray paint, you know, the, the pores are too dry and the stuff doesn't stick. You practically gotta grind it. He's just so matter of fact. And right. he delivers those lines so well. That's one of my favorite little scenes that he does. It's a little, it's more dialed back, but he just, he does it so well. That was one of the ones that was like the gift that kept giving to because <laughs> when I watched that originally, I thought she was, I thought it was like a, a misunderstanding gag where she was oh. talking about, oh, you you did plastic surgery on my aunt. And he's like, yeah, we just did the spray paint. You really got to grind in the, <laughs> the things. But then watching it now, you know, rewatching, I'm like, oh, I get the joke actually for the first time. Yeah, because she's like, yeah, it was a shame to bury her. Yeah, yeah. It looks so good. <laughs> And oh, I'm, I'm surprised that you actually went back for it after watching it for the first time on DVD because that was like the big faux pas because when they did the initial DVD transfer for this, it was like horrible quality. It was all muted colors. It was grainy. Uh, oh, wow. It took until they went to Blu-ray to actually have a decent looking version of this film. Like people were pissed. Yeah, because color is very important in this film. It's Mm -hmm. rich. It's very richly designed. The production design is amazing. I love the production design in this film. Because all the costumes and Liesl's outfits and LA mansions. LA mansions and just all this stuff. And, you know, just the the costumes that that um madeline and helen are wearing with the the red and the blue mm-hmm. and that stuff just has to pop yeah and if it doesn't it, it kind of kills some of the campiness and the yeah everything is everything's dark everything's candle lit uh but 
everything's like black and white like the the floors are all like marble and stuff but you're right when when they want the color to pop like all the red means something in mm -hmm. this movie uh well, well, there's not a lot of blood really no um, there's just like when she stabs the finger or when she's doing the thing that's really yeah about it. yeah and the hole but yeah <laughs> all all those it's just all those things really tend to pop and it feels like both the women have like a motif where uh Meryl Streep is more like a like an ivory she has this like ivory deal going on she's always in like this off white or this like or pearl. blue like like sky blues baby blues so. yeah yeah Goldie Hawn's more black and red mm -hmm. um and then you know uh what's his fate Bruce Willis is just always just looks like he just looks like a schlub <laughs> he just, just looks like gray he's just meat. got stains on him and his hair is all crazy and his Shirt's not tucked in right. Oh, is, did anyone <laughs> have as much fun making this film as Isabella Rossellini, though? Hold out your hand. Ah! What are you nuts? Watch. I don't think so. I think she was having a ball, and she's perfect for this role. Just so her rad. voice and how commanding her presence is, and she looks gorgeous. She's. Mm -hmm. She's so funny because she just plays it completely straight and that makes it 10 times better. But she also goes, she meets uh, Bruce Willis up there where she's like, Bin or whatever, just yes. like screaming <laughs> at the lightning, like Dr. Frankenstein just going fucking crazy. <laughs> uh, and that also leads to one of my favorite uh, lines as well. She's like, now a warning. Now, now a warning? <laughs> now a warning. Now a warning? <laughs> I say that all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now? Oh, God. That whole scene is really funny, too, because, you know, she, she stabs her with the in the finger to, to give her a little taste, a little mm -hmm. sample of the merchandise. Uh -huh. She's looking at her hands, and, you know, there's this there's this crescendo of music as as the skin changes, you know, and her, her one hand is all youthful now, and then she's just like, check okay? Because, yeah. she, you know, she didn't want to <laughs> pay the initial amount. She's like, yeah, I ain't paying that. But then yeah. that whole thing um, where she go, she's going to leave, but then she goes to the mirror to see if it's taking effect. And you see it start in her face. And then she looks behind her and her <laughs> boobs go up one by one. And then her boobs go up one by one. And yeah. she, I'm a girl. <laughs> it's just so, it's so crazy and hilarious. It's, it's just, it's so funny. I'm glad that we got the one scene where we got to see the complete transformation. Mm -hmm. You didn't need it like three different times, really. No. Uh, it, just the way they did it was so perfect. And it was such a, like a throwaway time. She's literally <laughs> walking out the door getting her coat. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, love how they did the boob thing because they, they, they built a pneumatic bra, but it didn't work. Oh so they God. had Meryl Streep's dresser hide behind her and put her hands underneath and move the boob up one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. I figured they like played it in reverse and just had them kind of drop, but that's even better. She just went <laughs> instant boob lift. Yes. <laughs> my ass. I can see my, my ass. ass. <laughs> Where she falls down the stairs. Yeah. That oh gosh, it's almost it's almost cartoonish with all the back and forth and they're racing around and you take him to the hospital and um, is it Sydney Pollack that plays the doctor? Because I, I can't really be certain without an X-ray, but uh, the the uh, bone protrusion through the skin that that's not a good sign and uh, your body temperature's below eighty and your 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 heart stopped beating. What the hell does that mean exactly? That is such a great scene. That is such a great scene. Just where he's freaking out because he sees the the bone popped out of her neck, and and he's so <laughs> matter of fact with trying to explain what's happening, and you don't realize that while he's explaining what's happening, he's taking like a nitroglycerin. <laughs> he's popping a nitroglycerin pill because he's about to have a heart attack because this woman's clearly dead, but she is talking. Right. To him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get a second opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Where are all the doctors? And they're all trying to revive the doctor. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this movie is just such a fun take on the zombie genre, right? Like, at, at that, especially at this point, like, there's mm -hmm. zombies have been done to death. <laughs> at this point, 1992, yeah, there was, like, a, a big craze. I think this was uh, coming off, like, everyone was more obsessed with vampires. 
at the time. This was around the time where it was just like uh, near dark and Lost Boys and Interview with the Vampire, I yes. think, was just around the corner. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Hollywood was really into vampire. So we were kind of like removed. But this was such a low key zombie film that you could like pass it off to your grandma and like oh yeah through. oh yeah because i mean so many people love this film that don't like horror robert zemeckis originally wanted this to be a sequel to tales from the crypt mm -hmm. the original film and even the original trailer um has the tales from the crypt music over has the it. danny elfman theme yes yeah. and you could see where it would fit i mean they obviously shined it up a little bit mm -hmm. um made it a little more uh comedic I mean, most tales from the crypt have a little comedic slant to it, but this one is is pushed even further. But yeah, I can see it, where it would, could exist in 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 that universe. It totally feels like a tales from the crypt uh, episode, especially because the ending. And I'm glad that he fought for the more bleak ending because they had yes. a completely different kind of oh, okay, whatever ending <laughs> shot with like Tracy Ullman mm -hmm. and and Bruce Willis were, were married. It was another time skip. And then, yeah. you know, they, they find them and it's it's just more like hopeful and stuff. Man, it's a straight up like bleak <laughs> nihilistic fuck. He, he, they're laughing at his funeral, like blah, blah, blah. Live forever. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, it, it is, it's like the perfect bow, like for oh, yeah. this kind of a movie. Oh yeah. Because, I mean, because he won't, they want to keep him around. They want him to drink the potion so he can keep painting them and making them look presentable. And then they realize after he's escaped, after he's decided not to take the potion and escape from Liesl's house, they're like, okay, we have to take care of each other. And then they have that little moment on the bench where they're like, you paint your, I'll paint your ass, you paint mine. And yeah. then they realize <laughs> that they're going to have to do this for eternity. <laughs> They're stuck with each other now and they're getting exactly what they deserve. <laughs> yep, go to his funeral. And, and they're just, and, and the guy is just like so into it, like giving the, it's the most uplifting, you know, yeah. uh, obituary ever. Yeah, cause he, he went in and had a whole new life. He had kids and a wife yeah. and grand. He had like six kids at 50 yeah. years old. <laughs> It, it's just it, the ongoing theme of, of the stairs too. They, that was the, that was like the ongoing through line. Uh, that's when, you know, she, she falls down the stairs uh, or he pushes her down the stairs. And then you have uh, the scene where they try to drug him uh, when he's trying to leave. And then that doesn't work. So she smacks him over the head with a planner. He almost falls down. Almost they save down. him. And then the very end, just again, <laughs> just perfect icing on the cake. They just explode and, and you They're get like the one liner. Mannequin pieces. And yeah. Like do you remember where you parked the car? <laughs> it brings up so many themes, especially uh, feminine themes of aging mm -hmm. and getting older and the fight against that. Every woman goes through that. And I know the LGBTQ community has really glommed onto this film. I think for the high camp and the costuming and the acting and just yeah. the comedy involved, because it's it's so catty and snappy. And yeah, I love it. It's so great. It's yeah, so it's great. It, it's like a hairspray or like a uh, headwig. Yeah, a little bit mm -hmm. where yeah, because they, they they are just like so fabulous. And mm -hmm. and I, I have actually I because I, I didn't know that I was unaware of that until doing some research for this show, uh, and then I was watching some of the like the the drag like versions of this mm -hmm. oh my god they are right? fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love rewatching it i was so happy today that i got to watch it again so <laughs> let's see uh, off the top of your head now we're, we're, we're gonna think about the scene where they're at liesel's party how many dead celebrity cameos can you can you grab there was elvis there's there elvis was james dean um, he takes his car. Yes. Which is awesome. <laughs> Andy Warhol, <laughs> Marilyn Monroe. Standing um, next to each other. Yep. Jim Morrison. Mm -hmm. Was the was the girl that he was with someone? I don't that's, know. That's she always might have like, been. Yeah, I've always wondered about that. And I think, and she references Greta Garbo, but I don't know if you see her at the party or not. When, when she's taking the potion, right? Yes, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was one that I had to look up. I never got that reference until I, I actually looked it up. Yeah, she was the most famous actress in the world. And then she's like, leave me alone. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the twitching eye guy also. Is that like... So I always wondered this. It's good that we have this forum to, to, to you know, mm -hmm. John's too stupid to get it on his own. So he, that's why he has Lindsay here. But 
is his eye twitching because he's dead too and that's kind of foreshadowing like you better take care of yourself that's what i was thinking today at first i thought okay this is just a weird guy you know yeah. and that's the thing to make him more weird but that could be because if anything comes up like you know you can't fix it if you can't you know it's just, yeah yeah you're gonna have parts of you are gonna start to to break down possibly and that's mm -hmm. one thing he's got going on is his eyes all wacky <laughs> forever maybe he, yeah maybe he he like uh mouthed off the lethal and she like backhanded him and it like destroyed his eye but hey right? you can't fix it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, which he has another great line well, i'm really really sorry Anna, don't talk just go away don't talk just go away <laughs> just go away <laughs> you're in the shit house now pal i say that a lot to my kids there's so much and i love i love how she because when she's putting on airs, you know, she's just like, oh, and yes, and ah, and I'm fabulous. But then when she's alone or she's talking to Ernest, that's when the new work comes out. She's a woman. A woman, Ernest. From Newark, for God's sakes. You're a blasey or a, a boozy, flaccid clown. You know, she's just got this stank on her voice, and I just yes. love it. <laughs> yeah, well, because that that's the ongoing thing where she she is cheap, right? And that's yes. that's the worst thing that you could call her because she is this star, but she did start out for you know as this this gal for you know Jenny from the block from Newark, right? <laughs> and she was you know probably you know just bouncing around all the homies, and then Helen was like the stick in the mud you know bookish kind of mm -hmm. but overly judgy and her friends were judgy and they kept you know her around because she was probably the fun girl right you, you know all, all of this you know it translates so well into like real life <laughs> <You're> right <laughs> it's so relate like these two are so relatable even though they're like caricatures mm -hmm. no they they represent very specific things and archetypes female archetypes really <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite scene out of here. Oh gosh, there's so many. I I like I said I love when she first gets the potion. That's an amazing scene. And then when they have their resolution, they finally kiss and make up and they're like, "You say this and then I'll if you apologize for this, I'll apologize for this." And then <laughs> <laughs> Goldie Hawn sits down. Of course, she's got the the thing sticking through her stomach as she sits down. <laughs> and Meryl Streep's head keeps bobbing down and she has to wrench it back up and hold it up. That's always, that's a great scene. Again, just the silliness of this movie and, and a tribute to uh, Bruce Willis is he pulls off a triple take in this movie. <laughs> when he's, when she first comes down after she's dead, Goldie Hawn is, is there and she's like, we need to bury her. What did you do with her? And she comes down and confronts her and she kind of goes around the corner and she grabs the gun mm -hmm. and Bruce Willis just sees the gun cabinet closing and he turns away and then he does a triple take. It's, oh man. It's, it's so good. It's so many achievements unlocked, <laughs> like filmmaking wise in this. Because mm -hmm. it, it, it just has all of those like like I said, Zucker brother type gags. What was it like a congressman or a mayor or something that was that had a heart attack while like screwing the underage like uh, assistant? Oh, it was a, it was a famous like Mexican actor. No, oh, that's like right. That. And yeah. he's, he's just like frozen in, with a big Joker smile. <laughs> right? and he's like, "Don't worry." And before he sees him, he's like, "Don't worry, I'll, I'll give him character." He's like, "That's the last thing he needs." <laughs> we need to be able to recognize him. <laughs> a little character and a little depth. Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny too because it's like talking about a caricature. Bruce Bruce Willis is playing a caricature of himself, like for the next thirty years of his filmmaking career. He's just going he through the doesn't motions. care. Just yeah, does not care at <laughs> all. Instead of working on corpses, he's working on movies that turn right? out to be corpses. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fabulous film. If I had one one word for it, it's just it it is it, like now that I know that like it has been adopted from like the the lbgtq plus community it just makes mm -hmm. so much sense and it just makes it that it's it's like a a new age rocky horror almost and it i does, wish that, yes it has a lot of those elements i i it, it's super quotable like rocky horror i wish that it would i you know i have such fond memories going to you know rocky horror nights you know stuff mm -hmm. like that and everyone's screaming and it's like a it's like going to a concert but right? it's a movie um, for all the kids under, you know, 30 that have no idea what we're talking about. But I think that this movie could have been that if it, I guess if it didn't have the pedigree that it did, 
I think so. And this film, top to bottom, in front of the camera and behind it, has so much talent, so much mm -hmm. credentials, just, just has everything going for it. And I think another thing is just... It's another one of those films that just isn't talked about a lot. Yeah. It kind of falls between the cracks, especially in mainstream audiences. Yeah. And and I hope it has a much bigger resurgence than it already has because it's it has its place in cinematic history with the groundbreaking special effects it's done. It has two, three huge stars in it all playing wonderful, wonderful comedic roles. And it's it's just so much damn fun. Siempre viva! It is so fun. <laughs> uh, I mean, let's not cry too hard. It won an Oscar. It, it made did. triple its budget. Right? <laughs> like, we're like, oh, no one gave it a chance. And it made like $149 million. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it's true though. It, it's just like, because it was, a, it, it fooled a lot of like, I guess they weren't soccer moms back then, just like wino moms, you know? Yeah. It's just like, everyone's like, oh, we're gonna go see Meryl Streep and Goldie Hawn movie. And they're like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> Don't go see that. You know, Siskel and yeah. Ebert famously gave it a, uh, you know, a double thumbs down. They just said that the performances were great, the effects were great, but it, it wasn't saying anything. It's like, fuck And off. it doesn't need to say, not every movie has to say something. And I mean, it does say something. I mean, it's look how- It's super resonant, look, yeah. Yes, look how, look how youth, obsessed our culture is right yeah. now i mean how many pe people are getting plastic surgery and botox younger and younger and younger mm -hmm. so i mean th this movie is still relevant today and it's the 30th anniversary this year of this film and i it's in it, it, it deserves to be celebrated even more it does good job bob Semeckis. <laughs> right <laughs> you all accidentally made a banger <laughs> Death becomes her. And then he made Forrest Gump. <laughs> <laughs> How would you recommend this movie to someone that's never even heard of it? Oh gosh, I would say, God, I mean, it's difficult to describe this movie because it, it occupies a place of its own, very much so. Mm -hmm. But I would say if, is going to get back to those movies that I, I said are, are likened to it earlier, like Heather's, Mean Girls, Jawbreaker, just mm -hmm. all those kind of films where the camp is high and it's just catty, a bunch of one-liners and this twisted sense of humor. And the quality is high. And the quality is high. And I think, I think that alone should drive people towards this movie. And, and especially, I think, People who like horror would love this movie. It's got tons of body horror in it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's he's <laughs> he's pumping Meryl Streep full of formaldehyde and spray painting her so she doesn't look dead. <laughs> I mean, what more do you want? It's it, almost it's, Ted and Lauder-esque, some of the <laughs> shit going on in this movie. <laughs> it, it's baby's first body horror, right? Yes, like, it is. One, you know, one minute you're watching Death Becomes Her and the next minute you're, you're snorting Cronenberg films. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it, it's a gateway drug. It is a uh, gateway drug. Uh, <laughs> It's, it, and, but, if, no, it's, and if you like John Waters stuff, you'll yeah. like this. You'll like this stuff. Yeah. It has those same sensibilities bubbling, bubbling underneath it. Yeah, like Serial Mom. Kind of, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah, it. You know, we joke about it, we laugh about it, but it. I, I feel like it really did shape my sensibilities to like cult films or, or films like this, not like mm -hmm. non-mainstream films. Yeah, and especially you know, talk about a gateway drug. You have so many. Oscar winners and well-known people that you grew up with it, and they're in a movie like this. You're like, whoa, if these people are, are in a movie like this, there's so much uh, rabbit holes to kind of go down and this is just like a perfect jumping off point. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that, that's our long overdue discussion on, <laughs> we could talk about this for eternity, but unfortunately Liesl's was closed. No, the uh, supply chain wore out and she couldn't get any potion. She couldn't get any, what do you think that was made out of? It's a little, it's a little gross looking. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, it's pink. It's it's sparkly. It's, comes in a cool little vial. All viscous, right. Uh, yes, it does. Viscous. Yes, very viscous. Like a, <laughs> it's like a shining little vial of eggs, uh, egg whites. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> I would not drink that. The salmonella. I, I, what if you had salmonella forever? Like, yeah, just it's like you're just puking and shitting all the time. All the time. <laughs> All that, that's like my life anyway. Yeah. <sighs> Lindsay, the, we, again, we could talk about this forever, but we have to call this one to a close. Where can everyone yeah. find? Well, first, thank you so much for, for finally doing this with me, but where can everyone find you? Oh, you can find me on my YouTube channel, which is just my name, Lindsay Washburn. And you can also see me on the Bad Movie Night podcast, which is just over on the channel, Bad Movie Night. We go live every Monday and then that episode is posted every Thursday. BMN in the hizzy. Yes. Uh, you could follow me at John the Host on the Twitter birds. You could also follow this very show at the Cult of Films. Until next time. Now an ending. Now yeah. an ending.